Hey there, Astro Ventures. Um, today's topic, we're going to take a look at guiding with an ASI Air. Now, this is both relevant to uh, using a Sky Guider Pro, which has that capability. Now, the guiding that it can assist with is only in the right ascension. That's the only option that it has uh, due to the you know that that type of system, because the Sky Guider Pro is not a go-to mount. Uh, additionally, if you're using, say, an HEQ5 or you're using the, um, I think it's the Skywatcher GTI, I know uh, Sasquatch Mike has one, which is a go-to mount, this will all apply. One of the things that can be really tough is you have your guiding accuracy, and that shows up on a graph across the uh the bottom of your display now i've taken a look at some different videos of how to improve that with your settings and i kind of stumbled upon something and and if i have this wrong i'm wanting to hear from the community that's using uh an asi air to do their guiding and in the comments you know if i'm wrong please say so please explain and please explain anything that I'm missing. Although I don't think I'm missing something and, and I think I'm kind of onto something with what I want to share today here. And so, you know, follow along, see what you think. And, uh, you know, let me know both pro and con, you know, oh, you're onto something that makes sense or no, you're kind of missing the point and this is why, and this is how it should be. So, Let's get started here. Uh, in front of me, this would be essentially my iPad that would be in front of me. And I take the initial guiding image for uh, or from my ASI Air, which is paired to a ZWO ASI 120 uh, monochrome uh, planetary camera. And that's what I'm using. It's a small little 1.2 something, I think 1.23 megapixel image. And it transfers onto the iPad quickly because it is such a small image. So initially, here we are. We've got three stars that have showed up. And when you have your initial image, you're going to tell it to go ahead and choose a star. Now, what's going to happen is, is it'll choose a star to do its guiding off of, and that particular star will get a box around it, and the other ones will get these guide rings. Now, the specific star that it uses, uses as its primary to do its guiding off of and make its adjustments doesn't matter, and so I'm not worried about the box being there. But here you have the three rings that would show up around additional stars because the ASI were the ASI air will specify a specific star with a box around it as its primary and then it grabs other stars to assist in looking for that movement to make its guide adjustments now i recently watched a video from a large youtube channel the guy is great and i apologize i can't remember his name off the top of my head and i don't want to say it incorrectly but one of the things that he had mentioned was about using a guiding update of three seconds with uh, his guide camera and the default setting for the right ascent the right ascension and the declination adjustments now remember if you were doing this off of a sky guider pro you would have just the right ascension uh, the default is 2000 milliseconds now with this the information available will tell you that if the camera is not making adjustments quick enough then you may need to speed up or slow down your right ascension and declination adjustments. But the default is at 2,000 milliseconds, which in plain English is two seconds. And what I want to do here is walk through this thinking that I've stumbled upon because I went through and I tuned my HEQ5 to get rid of any uh, backlash or slop between the gears and the worm gears and I tightened it up and that improved it but 
my guiding was still not where it should be or not what I think it should be. So here's where the math in my head started going. So if my guiding image is updated at three seconds, okay, that means that this image showing the stars is updated, refreshed every three seconds. Now, the computer is making adjustments for right ascension and declination at 2,000 milliseconds. 2,000 milliseconds is, in plain English, two seconds. So we have a guide image coming in to update and show what the adjustments have done at three seconds, but the computer is making adjustments at two. So let's take a look here. If we start off at zero, zero initial guiding image, which was, let me see here. There we go. There's the first stars. Uh, along comes the rings. It's the ASI air chooses which star is the primary. And we have no adjustment necessary because right now everything is all set. So zero, zero, that was your stars. Zero, two, in comes the rings. We're all set. And then at zero, three, because my guiding image, which are in blue, my next update is at three seconds, okay? And so we end up with some star drift. So let's change this up. And so here my stars have started to drift to the north. And with that, with our adjustments being set at 2,000 milliseconds, that means that at four seconds, I have my first correction. With this four second correction, the system sees that the stars have drifted to the north. And so as a result, it's going to make an arrow down adjustment. Well, at six seconds, because my corrections are coming along at every two, it's going to make another adjustment because it looks back at this image from three seconds. It knows that it made a correction. It pulled down. It looks at it. Nothing has occurred. And then it makes another adjustment. So it ends up pulling down harder because it didn't make an adjustment. In comes the new image at 06 seconds because our last one was at the three second point so it's going to now bring in this new image well the new image let's see here give me just one moment uh the new image because two corrections have actually been applied because one of them pulled it down probably somewhere close to correct and then the second adjustment, this greater pull, pulled it out the bottom of the ring. And so now we've got an error. And so now it has to make another adjustment. So here, so you have a four second adjustment, a six second adjustment, two corrections that have been made off of the same image from the three second. Along comes that six second new image. It now sees the stars way down here. It now has to make a north correction. So it ends up pulling back up. Now, the way the numbers come together, eight being this correction, so the next one won't happen until 10. So off of this one image, one correction is made because at nine seconds along comes the new image. So that correction was made. The star comes back up. Let's see here. That one's back off and we're back on, on target. Now at 10 seconds, we have a drift that's occurred, but because we're still on the nine second image, we don't see it when the 10 second correction should happen because the ASI air sees the nine second image and goes, oh, no drift, it's good. Then along comes the 12 second correction. But again, it's looking at the nine second image. So no correction is needed. And then at 12 seconds, 
three seconds later from the nine second, we finally get the new image and it has to make a large correction because the 10 second drift and the 12 second drift were never corrected because it was looking at the nine second image. And so at 14 seconds, we now have a big correction. And this continues on and on and it causes your guiding to jerk back and forth. My point being with all of what you're seeing is that when you have a mismatch between the image update and the right ascension declination update, you can end up with corrections being made off of an old image. And that starts yanking the mount back and forth because of erroneous information. And to my way of thinking, if a guide image is set at two seconds, then your right ascension and declination update should be at two seconds. If your guide image update is at one second, well, then your right ascension declination should be at one second. Now, I did add in, and I tested this with my HEQ5 because, as I said, I made backlash adjustments, and I tightened that up. I adjusted my worm gear. I tightened it up. My guiding was better, but it still wasn't where it should be. It was kind of jerky back and forth at points, which I think goes back to my mismatch of ratio between new image and the update. And so this was my next adjustment was I did two second updates with a 2001 millisecond. And the idea being is that I have this one out here in the uh, thousandths place. So that's 2001 thousandth of a second. Um, I have this sitting here just to kind of slow it down just a, a a touch relative to the guide image, but essentially they're running at a one-to-one -one ratio. So every two seconds, a new image comes in and an update happens. That improved what I was seeing with my guiding. And now I was consistently keeping it um, pretty darn good. And then I thought about it and I went, well, what if I took it to one second with an RA declination update of one second. And the reason I haven't gone, and this actually improved it even further, my guiding has been outstanding. Now with that, uh, of course you could think, well, why don't you reduce the guide image? There is a certain amount of time that's needed to send the image from the camera to the computer and the computer to process. My guide camera, is the very common ASI 120, which is a 1.2 megapixel image. That image comes into the computer pretty darn fast. And I have found that one second works pretty good. I don't think I will take it any faster than that because I think I might be uh, uh, trying to tell it to make updates over here faster than what the image can come into it. But my point being is, is that what I have found, in my personal opinion, and again, I want to hear from people in the comments, am I wrong in my thinking? And don't take what I'm saying as, you know, I'm the, you know, the, the guiding Jesus that just came along with, here's the answers, here's the commandment from George. No, this is just my doing math in my head and thinking, you know, three second guide image to a 2000 millisecond update is a mismatch. And so ultimately I'm finding a one-to-one -one ratio of new image to adjustment really does a huge job in improving my guiding, provided that you're not dealing with a backlash issue in your gears or your worm gear. So I really want to hear from people. What do you think? Do you think I'm onto something? Is there something that I'm missing? Share it in the comments below, because as I said before, I am new to the world of guiding and the HEQ5. So there you have it. These are my thoughts. Again, I could be completely wrong. Let me know if you think I'm onto something. Let me know in, in the comments below. And, you know, I would suggest because next weekend we have coming up the new moon. 
if you don't mind, you know, give it a try on your own setup. And, you know, if you're guiding and, and come on back and give me some feedback on it, see what you think. But again, this is assuming that you have taken care of backlash from your gears and your worm gear. And this would also apply on the right ascension for those that are guiding with a Sky Guider Pro. So there you have it. Um, I hope that I'm on to something, but I want to hear from you. If you like what you're seeing here and you like what we're doing at AstroVenture, consider liking, subscribing, ringing the bell, and sharing the video. And again, in closing, just remember, I am not saying that I am the guiding Jesus that's here with the commandment of how to do it. I'm just thinking the math wasn't mathing. And uh, let's see, maybe I'm onto something. Maybe I'm crazy. Let me know. Until next time, I wish you clear skies and uneventful nights.